All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Or if you're here for the first time, welcome for the first time uh, to the Smart Live class. For me, it's a Wednesday afternoon here at, uh, at uh, the Canadian College of English Language in Vancouver. Wherever you are or whatever time it is, um, I, hope you're, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> I hope you're having a good time. Okay, so if you've been here before, welcome back. Um, if it's your first time, I'm your teacher for the next hour. Okay, my name is Sean, and of course, some of you have probably already met um, our friendly moderator in the chat. Lane is there to um, assist you if you have any questions throughout the lesson. Put your questions in the chat, and um, we'll try to help you out as best we can. Okay, so let's get started. Good to see a lot of familiar faces, familiar names. Um, let's get rocking here, okay? So, what are we doing today in class? Let's take a look. We're going to start really today. Today's got a magic word, okay? The word of the day is define, okay? The word define um, is, well, it's going to define what we do today, okay? So, the word define, most of you guys probably know, but we're going to talk about kind of the different meanings of, of define and how it's used. Um, and of course, like most of my classes, it's going to start off with a bit of a rant, and I promise you it will all make sense in the end. Okay, so the word define, what does it mean to define? Let's define, define. All right. So, obviously the first is to give meaning or to explain the meaning of a word or, or something like, like that. Uh, you use the dictionary, obviously, as students, you're using the dictionary to find the definition of a word. So to define something means to, to uh, explain it, to give meaning to it. But there are other meanings as well. Um, for example, the word define can mean, in this case, with this, this lady, it means to show or to make something clear. Okay, so in this case, this woman is trying to define her lips with lipstick, right? She's trying to kind of um, show them. Kind of the same way, think about some guys wear, you know, tighter shirts to try to define their muscles. Um, not me, but other guys. All right, so define can mean to, to try to show something clearly, okay? And to define means to clearly describe, to describe exactly what something is. So in this case, this guy, maybe he wants to define his role at his job, to say exactly what his job is. Not just kind of a, um, a vague job, like teacher or a manager, but to define exactly what it is that he does. Okay, so the word define can be used to do just that, to describe something, to make it, to make it clear, right? And we can use the word define to ask questions like this. What defines you as a person? Meaning, what, what makes you who you are? What are the essential qualities of, of you, okay? So are you defined by um, the clothes you wear and the car you, you drive? Or are you defined by the way you interact with people, the way you treat people? Are you defined by your friendships with others, your family um, and the people around you? Do they make you who you are? Do they um, give meaning to you as a person? I know that's pretty deep, right? So that's the word define. And from define, the verb define, comes the adjective defining. Now, a, a really common collocation uh, with defining is this term, defining moments. Now, in this case, defining moments means um, significant events, a really essential thing that happens uh, in your life that, again, shapes you and makes you who you are, for example. Um, what are some defining moments in life? Well, graduation is a defining moment. Getting married, perhaps. The proposal can be, a, or the decision to get married is a defining moment. And of course, having babies is a defining moment. And actually, her, this, this lady's baby belly is, is defined by her uh, top here, her outfit. So these are defining moments. And we also use the word defining moment to talk about history, significant events in history, okay? So for example, in the chat, you guys can throw out some ideas. The question is, what are some defining moments of the past 100 years? Meaning, what 
are some things that happened that are essential or significant events that uh, shaped the last hundred years or really influenced and affected us, really significant stuff, not, not little things that, that don't really matter, but the, the important stuff. I mean, something like um, going to the moon, for example, is, could be considered a defining moment, all right? So feel free to discuss that in the chat. The, I guess the question is, why am, I, why am I talking about this, right? Why am I talking about defining moments? Well, because the word defining um, has a lot to do with the main lesson for today. And as we said, to define something means to make it clear. And this is what I'd like to, to do today, is try to make something clear for you. I see some, some ideas in the chat here. Tesla is, a, def is, a, is a, a defining moment, or the invention of the internet. The smart live stream, <laughs> yes, exactly. This, right now, what you're watching is a defining moment uh, in history, right? Um, if you're watching it 100 years from now, perhaps, okay? Um, all right, so why are we talking about this? Here, let me clarify, let me make it clear to you. This is what we're talking about. I'm gonna show you two sentences, all right? Um, the students who watch Sean's live class can improve their writing skills, hopefully. I believe that, okay? And the students who watch Sean's live class can improve their writing skills. All right, so two sentences, almost, almost identical. A slight difference here in the, in, the, in the commas, right? But we're gonna talk about today how these two sentences are different. Um, and this really connects back to something we talked about in, in, in a class many, many classes ago when we were talking about the importance of the comma and punctuation and how it can really change or affect the meaning of a sentence. So today, the lesson is this, defining and non-defining adjective clauses. So what does that mean? And for anybody who's a student in SMART, that is English 125, Unit 6. So this is in the grammar section of, of Unit 6, and it is, it is connected to grammar, but this side of things, what we're talking about, is really um, more focused on, on written use of the language as well, because, well, we're going to be talking about using commas and, and whatnot. Okay, so defining and non-defining adjective clauses. What am I talking about here? Let's get into it. What, let's start with the simple, the, the basics, right? Let's define an adjective clause. What is an adjective clause? All right, so let's break it down, okay? An adjective, as most of you guys know, is a word that describes or modifies another word, particularly a, a noun in the sentence, right? Think about words like blue or fast. These are adjectives. A clause, as we've discussed in previous lessons, is a group of words with a subject and a verb. Okay, so now put those two meanings together and then you get the definition for adjective clause. An adjective clause, also called a relative clause by some, is a group of words functioning together with a subject and a verb that are functioning as an adjective. So a group of words together that are describing or modifying another part of the sentence. All right, so first question coming up from Selma, non-defining and defining, restrictive and non-restrictive. Yes, that's, that's, that's true. That is correct, Selma. The thing about um, a lot of the stuff is we have um, more than one term for some of it. As I said, with adjective uh, clauses and relative clauses, you're absolutely right. So for today, we'll, we'll use the terms defining and non-defining. And we use the term adjective clause um, rather than relative clause just because I, I find adjective clause is a little bit clearer, right? Because it's just a clause functioning like an adjective. So the clause here, who was sitting in the corner, is considered an adjective clause because it's describing man, okay? So you're describing man with that clause. And here's some other examples of adjective clauses, right? Tennis, which is my favorite sport. Let's get food that many people eat daily. Louis uh, or Luis, maybe, whose brother is a doctor. Now, all of these clauses are describing the nouns that come before them, and therefore, they're considered adjective clauses. And today, we're going to be talking about the difference between the two types, because if you're looking at this screen, you've probably noticed already that there's a difference, right? That in this case, some of them have commas and some of them don't, okay? So 
Let's discuss that. As you probably noticed at the beginning of the lesson, I put two different types up there. You've got defining adjective clauses is the first type. So a defining adjective clause, think about um, what we were talking about with the meaning of defining there, that's important. The example, in this case, the students who watch Sean's live class can improve their writing skills. This is called a defining adjective clause, and I'll explain why in a moment. A non-defining adjective clause is this one. The students who watch Sean's live class can improve their writing skills. And really the only difference in what you see between defining and non-defining is um, the commas, okay? So let's, let's break it down. Let's talk about um, how the commas or lack of commas can affect the meaning um, in, the, in the sentence, okay? So let's start with defining adjective clauses, all right? What is a defining adjective clause? Well, what makes it defining is that it's necessary, just like those defining moments. They're essential things, okay? So a defining adjective clause is necessary information. It explains which person or thing that you're referring to. So we need the information in order to understand clearly which person or thing we're talking about. And with a defining adjective clause, you don't use commas. There's no punctuation for a defining adjective clause. Okay, so let me give you an example. Oh, look at these wonderful people. It's so nice. Okay, here's my sentence. The girl lives on my street. Okay, so the girl lives on my street. If I said this sentence and you're looking at this picture, um, if you're curious at all, of course, your first question is going to be, well, which girl, right? Because there are, there are three females in this picture. So we have to clarify, which girl am I talking about? So we need more information. So let's take that sentence away. Let's put in a new one that's more specific, okay? Now, this is better. The girl who is wearing red lives on my street. So in this case, who is wearing red is an adjective clause. You've got who is the subject and is is your verb. And it's modifying the word girl. It's explaining which girl I'm talking about. So. I need this information in order to understand which girl we're talking about, okay? And that is the nature of a defining adjective clause. Without this information, I don't have enough to understand the speaker or the writer, all right? Um, let me show you another example. So here we go. The man who sat next to me was very friendly. So again, in this case, who sat next to me is a defining adjective clause because I need it to understand the subject man, right? Which man? Well, the man who sat next to me, okay? Another one, I love, those, I love the shoes that you are wearing. Again, in this case, that you are wearing, I need that to understand which shoes you're talking about. Without that adjective clause, again, I don't have enough information. I would say, which shoes? What shoes are you talking about? And one more. The place where we stayed was really nice. And again, where we stayed is an adjective clause that's describing or modifying place to make it easier for you to understand what I'm talking about. So in this case, the relative clauses that we, or the relative pronouns rather, that we use um, for these adjective clauses are things like who, that, which, where, uh, whose, and so on, okay? This is the defining clause. Now, what's the difference between this and a non-defining clause, other than the commas, obviously? Okay, so the difference is that a non-defining adjective clause is extra information. So we are inserting, we're adding extra information to a sentence, but it's not necessary to understand which person or thing we're referring to. So it's, it's fine to have the information, it may be very interesting, but it, it, doesn't, it isn't required in order to fully understand the sentence. And because we're adding information that's not necessary, much like we talked about in a lesson about commas a few lessons ago, you have to put it between commas. If it's extra non-essential information, put it between commas. Okay, so let me show you an example. London, which was the host of the 2012 Olympics, 
is visited by over 15 million people each year. So in this case, I've put commas here because the adjective clause, which was the host of the 2012 Olympics, I don't need that information to understand London. Right? If I say London, you know what I'm talking about, right? You, you wouldn't say which London. All right. Well, actually some of you might be saying, well, ho hang on, hang on, Sean. What about, what about London, Ontario, Canada, right? Home, birthplace of Hollywood actor Ryan Gosling and star of The Notebook, the most romantic movie in history. What about poor old London, Ontario? Well, the answer is none of you thought that because, um, well, sorry to London, Ontario, but you, you aren't going to assume it. If someone says London, you're going to think red buses, the Queen, fish and chips, the eye, it's London. So in this case, I don't need to clarify which London I'm talking about, okay? I have a question coming in. Not so much a question. Selma thinks I look like Tobey Maguire. I guess that's, that's okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah? As long as it's not like when he turns bad in the third movie. I hope I didn't ruin that for you, but... <laughs> okay. I think I would rather... I, would, I think I would prefer to look like um, Ryan Gosling than Tobey Maguire, but that's, that's my problem, I guess. Okay, so London, England. <laughs> we don't need that clause in order to understand London, and that's why we put it in commas, and that's it. That's as simple as that. So if you don't need the information to understand which thing or person we're referring to, just put that information in commas and, and you're good, okay? Now, the tricky thing obviously is that it's not always as easy as, as uh, London, right? Sometimes you're using nouns that um, might be a little bit trickier and sometimes um, it might be up to you to decide do I need this information in order for the, the reader to understand who I'm talking about? Okay, so let me show you this sentence here. The man, who I had never met before, chatted with me for the entire flight. So if I put this information between commas like this, what I'm saying is that you don't need the information between the commas to understand which man I'm talking about. So if I write this sentence, I have to decide the person I'm talking to or, or speaking uh, or, or writing to, rather, understands which man, okay? Um, and that's kind of a judgment call that you have to make. Now, in this case, you might be saying, well, how do we know what man you're talking about, Sean? Which man? Which man are you talking about? Well, if you had been listening to me a couple minutes ago, I told you, I told you which man, right? The man, the man who sat next to me was very friendly. All right? So in that case, I've already told you about the man. All right? Okay? So I don't have to tell you again. What I can do is just give you another sentence about the man, but now I can add information in there. <laughs> All right? So it's, it, yeah, it's kind of up to you to, to decide it, um, what, the, what the reader needs to know or not. <laughs> okay? Oh, no, I'm so funny. So that's up to you. Now, do I have another example here? Perhaps I do. Yeah, one more example. All right. My friend, Roberto, who is from Brazil, loves to play football. Now, in this case, again, I, I don't need this, um, this information to understand Roberto because he's my friend and, and, well, his name is Roberto. So typically, I would say with non-defining clauses, we, I would say we use non-defining clauses with names of people or proper nouns uh, more often because um, typically, the name Roberto, I'm using to identify who I'm talking about there, okay? So typically, with a person's name, you're going to use um, a non-defining relative clause. Um, unless you know, well, I guess, uh, perhaps I could say Selma. Uh, there are many Selmas in the chat. I don't know which Selma I'm talking about. I could say Selma. I don't even know if I can say Selma from Algeria. I think there might be more than, <laughs> more than one, so I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of up to you to decide, all right? So let's talk about a couple other differences and then I'm gonna get you guys to do some work for me, okay? So a few other things that are different between defining and non-defining, all right? Non-defining uh, adjective clauses are not that common in spoken English. Um, usually, like that previous sentence, 
you probably just say, my friend Roberto loves to play football, he's from Brazil. Um, you don't typically uh, insert information like that when you're speaking casually uh, to friends. If you're talking uh, more formally to people, um, you may use a non-defining relative clause in speech, but I'd say it's much more common in, in writing. If, however, you do use um, a non-defining clause, just make sure that when you're speaking, you're just putting pauses at the commas, right? The computer, which I bought yesterday, cost me over $2,000, okay? That's not true. I did not buy a $2,000 computer yesterday. And David, who's sitting over there, works as a technician, okay? So just if you're in speech, make sure you've got that pause there. If there's no pause, um, then that's going to sound like there's no comma there, all right? One other difference, and then I'm going to get you guys to do some work. Now, this is my sentence about London, okay? You notice that in the relative clause, I use the word which. Now, a big difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses or adjective clauses is that in non-defining, you cannot use that. You can't say comma and then that with an, a, a non-defining adjective clause, all right? So just stick to which and you'll be, you'll be okay. Let's put which back in there. And that is good, okay? So these are a few differences, but rather than just sitting here listening to me talk all day, how about I get you guys to, to get your hands dirty, get in there and do some work for me, okay? So I'm going to get Lane to share the link for some practice. And I'm going to open up my copy so that you guys can see it on the screen. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll start easy maybe and then we'll get a little bit more creative as we, as we go. Let me make this nice and big so everybody can see it. So here you've got how many? I'll give you six, six sentences here. All right, six, actually six pairs of sentences. With each one you've got two sentences. And what you need to do is combine the two, making one of them uh, an adjective clause. So you have to decide, does it need to be defining or non-defining, okay? So do you need this information to understand the person or thing I'm talking about? Or is this just extra information that you're adding just to make your sentence more interesting, okay? So the first one we'll do together. We said Andrew is a, is a great guitarist. Andrew has been my friend for many years, so I'm going to take Andrew out of there. I'm going to take this whole thing here. I'm going to drag it. Put some commas. Just like that. And easy breezy, just like that. Andrew, who has been my friend for many years, is a great guitarist. Now, again, I'm using the non-defining relative clause because this information is not necessary to identify um, which Andrew I'm talking about, okay? We don't need to define Andrew. His name is enough. Um, if someone wants to ask a follow-up question and say, well, who, Andrew, who? Then you can just add the, the last name or something like that. But we typically don't use uh, defining clauses with, with names. Hmm, Letitia, a question coming in from Letitia, and the question is, when is information essential? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. And sometimes that's going to be um, up to you, okay? So you have to decide. Basically, the, the information is essential if the person you're speaking to or the person who's reading your sentence needs to understand which noun you're talking about, okay? So as we said, Letitia, with London, really no information about London is essential to identify London, right? When we say London, we know uh, which city we're talking about. So that's kind of the, the trick, is you have to decide, do I need this information to define or identify the noun or not? Or will the person I'm speaking to understand um, who I'm referring to? For example, if you guys write my name in the chat, if you say, I have a question for Sean, um, I mean, Lane's not going to ask you, Sean, who, right? Because you understand who you're talking to. So you wouldn't need to use information to identify me, right? So any adjective clause you write about me 
is probably going to be a, a, a non-defining clause because everybody knows who I am. Well, everybody here right now. Hopefully, hopefully everybody watching knows who I am. All right, so let's get back into that. Leticia, I hope that helped. If not, let me know and I'll try to clarify. Uh, you've got six more sentences, five more sentences here to go. I'm going to pop out of the chat, um, give you guys a break from looking at my face. <laughs> I'm going to put the happy music on and I want you guys to combine these sentences, make adjective clauses, maybe defining, maybe non-defining, and put your answers in the chat, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so get to work, um, and I'm out of here.
All right, and I'm back. Um, good work, everybody. Lots of stuff coming into the chat. Um, good, let's go over some of this stuff together now. <laughs> I'm looking at the sentences, and most of them, the answer is quite clear, but honestly, I'm looking at B, and we could, we could argue about which one is a better answer, honestly, but um, I see some good answers coming in. The, the interesting thing is that um, Yaroslava and Paul both put in answers and they're different, but I would say um, they're both very possible, okay? So some of you think that it's essential information and some of you don't. So this is a good example of when it is, uh, it kind of depends on you. It depends on the context of the sentence and the situation for you to decide, um, do I need this information or not? So some of you said this, let me put that up here and said some of you went with um, defining and said the laptop that is sitting on the table is brand new and that's fine if um, if there are multiple laptops right which in this case I mean at our school if you go into a classroom there are laptops everywhere so you may need a defining clause in that case um, and a couple of you went with um, non-defining and did that and said the laptop which is sitting on the table is brand new. And you could argue for both, honestly, as long as you understand that if you put this, this first one, B, or this one with the non-defining, B, that the reader has to understand um, which laptop you're talking about. Perhaps there's only one laptop in the room, and that's fine. Okay, now a couple of them, uh, the rest of them I think are a little bit more straightforward. So my hero is the astronaut Buzz Aldrin. Um, let's see, an answer from Sabrina, who has been to space, the astronaut, yeah, good. So I think you went like this, Sabrina, and said the astronaut um, Buzz Aldrin. Who has been to space many times? Like this is my hero. Good. Oop, put a period, period there. So the astronaut Buzz Aldrin, who has been to space many times, is my hero. All right. That was um, that was Sabrina's answer. Yeah, that's good. And Muhammad's answer, Buzz Aldrin, my hero, is the astronaut who has been to space many times. That's good too. Yeah. Lots of options coming in. Um, Really good. Okay, good stuff. And again, if you guys have questions coming in, then yeah, send, send them my way and uh, I'll try to answer them. So D, Selma, says astronomy, which I'm interested in, has been studied for thousands of years. And that's fine, that's good. Um, really good. Another real easy way to do it would just be like that. I'm interested in astronomy which has been studied for thousands of years, okay? Now that one, the way I did it, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that um, later, okay? So, that, but that's good, and, and Selma, your answer is, is great too, okay? A couple more. E, the house, the haunted house. Let me see a couple more here. Okay. Chateau 7. Welcome back. Good to see you. Um, and you said the house which my girlfriend lives in is haunted. Good. So the, the house, I would say, you know what? This is, this is a good example um, of the question you were asking, Chateau 7. You asked if, if you can use where in the, in the non-defining clauses, and you certainly can. You can use where in both defining or non-defining. And you could say the house where my girlfriend lives is haunted by ghosts. You could say something like that too. The house where my girlfriend lives is haunted by ghosts. Now in this case I'm using a defining clause uh, to describe specifically what house I'm talking to or talking about rather, referring to. Okay. And another example Another answer, which is, again, perfectly fine. Let me copy this. 
and this is coming from Erdogan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but let me, let me show you here. My girlfriend lives in the house which is haunted by ghosts. Now in this case, I might change uh, the to, whoop, I put it in the wrong place, didn't I? There we go. Let me drag that down here, there we go. My girlfriend lives in a house which is haunted by ghosts. That's a good uh, use of an adjective clause as well, good. And the last one, F, Eduardo, what do you got? My friend who is known to often exaggerate stories, spotted Bigfoot. Okay, this is, this is good. Let me put this one up here. Eduardo, very nice. Now, um, in this case, my friend who is known to often exaggerate stories, possibly, you, you may be using this information to identify which friend you're talking about, maybe. But I don't know if that's the best information to use to identify which friend you're talking about, right? You've got a friend over here who exaggerates and a friend who doesn't, maybe. But I think it makes more sense to put it in commas here and say, my friend, who is known to often exaggerate stories, spotted Bigfoot last year, or, or last weekend, rather. Okay, And I think a bunch of people have a similar answer to that, right? Um, yeah, Marianne, your answer was the same. My friend who is known um, to often exaggerate stories. Good. Okay. So, Luciana has some questions about... Yeah, here. The astronaut Buzz Aldrin. No, I wouldn't say you necessarily need the comma there. I like to put commas, though, between um, kind of the, the, the name and the title. Um, like my friend Dave, I might put uh, a comma after that, Luciana, but I know that you didn't put it in your answer, and that's, and that's fine too. Good. Okay, so this is, this is really good, guys. Good work. So let me um, go back into the presentation because I have more information to share with you about these adjective clauses, okay? Let me open this up. And then if you guys have more questions, we're going to go back to that document. So don't worry if you have, if you have more questions. Um, we can talk about that. Okay, let me go way down here to other differences. Let's go to my buddy with the thumbs up here because it is time once again for the mistake of the week. All right, the mistake of the week. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, of a hint here, a little help. This mistake is connected to um, what we're talking about, adjective clauses, okay? So this isn't so much, can you spot the mistake, all right? I'm gonna take the word spot out of there. It's, can you explain the mistake, all right? So I'm gonna put a sentence up on the screen and I'm gonna disappear for 10 seconds or so and I wanna see some answers in the chat. Why is this sentence wrong, okay? Obviously you're going to see pretty quickly what the mistake is but I want a clear um, explanation as to why it's a mistake, okay? So here's the sentence. People who enjoy their jobs are usually satisfied with their lives, okay? Discuss that in the chat. Why is that a mistake? Um, I'll give you 10 seconds and then I'll come back, all right? Get to it.
All right, lots of chatter in the chat. This is good. So, um, yeah, obviously a lot of you decided the, the mistake was the, the commas, which is true. I was kind of looking for why, right? Why are these commas a mistake? And some of you put some, some good stuff in there, right? So you guys said it's, it, you, you don't put commas there because it's not extra information, I think is what Paul said, right? That it's, um, it's a defining clause. And why is the question. Why, why do we know that this is a defining clause? Because before I mentioned that um, sometimes it's up to you to decide, right? When we were talking about the man. Or, uh, or the computer, the laptop. Sometimes it is up to you to decide uh, is this information essential or not, okay? Um, but other times it's, it's not a choice, right? And, and in this case, I would say this is not really a, a choice. I think this is essential information because if you took that clause away, then you would have a very general statement, right? You would say um, people are usually satisfied with their lives. Um, and that really changes the meaning of the sentence that I'm trying to um, put, put out here, right? So what I'm trying to say is specifically what kind of people are satisfied with their lives, right? Um, I'm narrowing it down and making it less general. So who enjoy their jobs is essential to understand which people are satisfied with their lives. Because not everybody enjoys their job. I know that. Um, no, well, not me personally, but... Um, I know that some people don't enjoy their jobs, and I know that some people aren't satisfied with their lives, um, which is unfortunate for them. But in this case, you need that information. So the, the, really the, uh, the moral of the story here, the point is you need this information in order to avoid making general statements. Okay? Watch out. when Sometimes when students put the commas down, they're creating this kind of generalization that you have to watch out for. So, on that point, look at these two sentences really quickly. Tell me which one of these is correct and why. Again, I'm going to pop out of the chat, or, or pop out of the screen, rather, for 10 seconds. Uh, talk, it, uh, talk it over amongst yourselves. Which of these sentences is correct and why? Okay? All right, good stuff, good stuff, guys. So yeah, a lot of you um, identified the first one as correct. So men who have stressful jobs have a high risk of heart disease, and that is that is correct. The first one is right, the second one is not, and again, here's why. Just to clarify, because this is the whole point of what we're talking about today, is that the first one is correct because this clause is essential, it's defining, what type of man could have a high risk of heart disease? Because not all men have a high risk of heart disease and not all men have stressful jobs, right? Some of them do, some of them don't. So that's why the first one is correct. And the second one um, is a generalization. In this, this second one here, because that's considered non-essential information, what I'm saying is men have a high risk of heart disease, which is not entirely true. Okay, it depends on what type of men. Men who have stressful jobs, men who don't exercise enough, men who um, eat too much fast food, for example, 
more specific, and in that case, you don't use the commas there, right? Okay. I don't really have, I don't know if I have a stressful job. I don't know if Lane, I don't know if Lane has a, Lane, you have a stressful job? Yeah? Yeah, maybe? I don't know, Julian's lying down again, right? He's, he's on three chairs now, so it's hard to say. But some people have stressful jobs, for sure. <laughs> so, how about, how about this? Let's, let's do a little bit more practice with these non-defining clauses here, okay? Um, let's get back into the document. I'm gonna get you guys to do another exercise. Back here. Actually, here, let me go to my copy. All right. Everybody go to part two for me. Now, this is just non-defining relative clauses, and this will allow you to get a little bit uh, more creative here, okay? So, I have put, um, oh, it, gets, it looks like Mark has a stressful job. Yeah, I know. I feel bad. Feel bad for Mark. He's got a very stressful job. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I think he's working. Are you working right now, Mark? Maybe? Yeah? <laughs> so, in part two, it says add non-defining adjective clauses to the following sentences. You've got six sentences. Each of them require, don't require information to understand, but I want you to add more information just to um, make the sentence per perhaps more interesting. So the first one, for example, she was born in Korea. So. Um, what can you say about Korea? So we can keep it simple. Which um, is in Asia, for example. Okay, She was born in Korea, which is in Asia. I know it's obviously very simple, um, but that's fine. So just add a non-defining clause um, to each idea, each sentence. Um, try, try a little bit harder than I did there <laughs> to crank out something easy. Um, show me what you got, show your range, okay? Show, show what you can do with these four sentences. And if you have questions, put them in the chat. When you write your sentence, put them in the chat and we'll put them up here on the screen and talk about them together, okay? So give me some non-defining adjective clauses. And I'm going to disappear once again. Go for it.
Okay, good stuff. Um, lots of good answers coming in on the chat. Let's put some of them up here. So let me get something for, for B. All right. <laughs> Marianne said, Obama, who is a fan of Spider-Man, is that right? Well, I don't know if that's right, but that's, yeah. Okay, so let me see some answers here. Let me put one up for Sabrina, says this one. Obama, who is the current president of the United States, is my brother. All right, good one. I would make that capital S and capital U for United States, but that's good. Let me put another one up here. Um, from Yomera. Let me put one more answer up here. Obama, who is the first African-American president, is the current president of the United States. That's right. Good. Good stuff. All right, and I've seen lots of good stuff coming in. Um, I can't put them all up here, but that's, that's really good. Good stuff. Okay, so what about C, the Revenant? What do you have for the Revenant? Um, <laughs> all right. All right, Marianne, I'll put yours up here. The Revenant, which won the award for best film of 2015, co-stars the gorgeous actor Tom Hardy. Yes, Tom Hardy. He's not so gorgeous in The Revenant, but um, sure, he's a, he's, he's a good-looking man. Why not? Maybe he's a talented guy. All right. Um, good one. All right, what else? Who else do we have here? Um, hmm. We've got... Lex, Lex L. I'll put yours up here. All right, The Revenant, which I didn't watch, won the award for best film of 2015. That's good. Yeah. Just always make sure when you're using the uh, I pronoun to capitalize it, okay, which I didn't watch. I might even say rather than didn't watch, I don't know, may, maybe I would say haven't, haven't watched because you, you may possibly still watch it. Who knows? All right, this is good. All right, coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Luciana, answer coming in from you. Let me put it up here. Coffee, which is Sean's favorite drink, is a common beverage around the world. That is true. Both. Both things are true. Um, Linda. Let me put Linda's up here. Coffee, double that E there. Coffee, which tastes good, is a common beverage around the world. Also true. I agree with both of those. Really good. All right. What about E? Chateau 7. <laughs> I like this one. It's from Chateau 7. The Mona Lisa, which resembles my grammar teacher from afar, is one of the most recognizable images in the world. Hopefully, I'm not your grammar teacher. <laughs> but I, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I don't know. Is the Mona Lisa a, 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 a beautiful lady? I'm not, I'm not sure. But that's a good sentence, Chateau 7. Um, Eduardo. I'll put yours up here, too. So really good answers coming in here, guys. Oh, what's that one? The Mona Lisa, which I stole, is one of the most recognizable images in the world. Good. Just get that S off, recognizable. Put a period at the end, and you're good. All right. And of course, the most important sentence of the batch is F. Sean is a wonderful person. What, what have you put here? So Sean is a wonderful person who teaches English. Sure. <laughs> Lots of stuff here. <laughs> Okay, how about this? I'll, I'll, put the, I'll put this one here. This is, this is a good one. Some crazy, some crazy sentences coming in, but this one's good. Um, Sean, who is hiding right now behind the screen, is a wonderful person. I'm going to take that W, make it a lowercase, and, and that's great. So a couple questions coming in. These are really good, guys. Paul is asking, can you add extra information twice in a sentence? Yes, you can. You can add... Um, as much information as you want to a sentence. Just make sure that it's still easy to read, okay? You have to not get um, too crazy uh, with it. But um, yeah, you can, 
You can definitely add more than more than one adjective clause to a sentence. Yeah, good, Paul. Um, so, what specifically was the sentence? Obama, who is president, like Spider-Man, inside information is yeah. Now your sentence there, Paul, is a little bit too much. Um, I don't think I would put them back to back like that. Adjective clause and then adjective clause and then adjective clause. I would be careful of it. Make it try to make it as clear as possible. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so how about this? One more thing. I know that it's, it's, it's been an hour, but before we run, I'm going to go back into the um, presentation to get you guys set up for the, the next thing. Because there is one more thing that I want to mention about um, adjective clauses, non-defining adjective clauses before we go. Okay, So let me bring you down here. For... Where are we? Yeah. Take up the screen here. One more thing before you go. Okay? And that is non defining adjective clauses, and this is something I kind of mentioned earlier, um, can modify an entire idea, not just a noun. So the non defining adjective clause can come at the end of a sentence, and rather than just modifying the noun that comes before it, it's modifying the whole sentence or clause that comes before. The, the, the adjective clause, okay? So let me explain. Let me show you an example before we run, okay? This is an example. It was raining on our wedding day, which forced us to change the plan. So in this case, the adjective clause, which forced us to change our plan, is modifying not just day, not just wedding day, but it's actually modifying the whole sentence. The fact that it was raining on our wedding day forced us to change our plan. Okay, so that's a difference between defining and non-defining. And here's one more example. He offered me a drive home, which was very kind of him. Okay, so again, uh, which was very kind of him is modifying, he offered me a drive home. So the whole sentence is being described or, or clarified or, or explained. Okay, so um, that's a little thing that I thought I would leave you with. Um, at the end of class because again it's so sad to see everybody go but it has been um, an hour it is time for for us to to say goodbye um, but perhaps actually one thing before I go is you will probably notice that in that document that you guys have whoops I disappeared there we go you do have a third exercise. If you, if you copied the link, I gave you four more sentences. Um, and for homework this week, if you want to practice this concept of putting the non-defining adjective clause at the end of the sentence, um, you can do that with these three sentences. So, um, I accidentally deleted my essay. So what happened? Um, what could I say? I accidentally deleted my essay, which forced me to start from scratch. Okay, start from scratch, from scratch meaning from the very beginning. So you can get creative, you can do whatever you want, just add some kind of non-defining extra information at the end of the sentence to modify or comment on the whole clause that comes before it. Okay? And you can do that for practice through the week. And if you want, you can give me your answers next week uh, when we come back for more, for more class. Okay? So yeah, so sad to say goodbye, but it is time. But I will stick around in the chat for a couple minutes after I disappear from the screen, as usual. Okay, if you guys have any more questions, um, I'll, I'll answer them there. And uh, hope to see you next time. Keep practicing your English. Keep writing. Keep reading. Um, keep checking us out on, on Facebook. Learn English on Facebook. Uh, keep watching Mark's class, of course, um, in the morning. And, and we'll see you next time. Okay? Thanks for watching.